offense of prostitution, but I don't know if that would change anything on the looks like courts to sue. What I have in the file here, as I call 23 CR 122, you were Courtney Darista Shadow present with your attorney. And uh, Mr. Dusler, there is a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation. I see that was most recently filed. Uh, and maybe there's another one. I don't have that. But I have this one filed on May 21st, 2024. And is it was an administrative hearing requesting a first amended and that has not been accomplished yet. I have that in the file. Uh, hold on. Wait, wait, I see something June 25th That's it. that I signed on April, uh, July 8th. That's it, Judge. Yeah. It hadn't, I guess, probably worked its way through yet. Let's see. But let's see what it says here. Committed the offense of prostitution. All right. Uh, I mean, we can proceed. I think we can move forward yes, without that with what we have here. And that could be brought in, though, if we have issues concerning uh, what punishment should be other um, other crimes, other offenses, bad acts are all part of the equation in determining punishment. It goes to the character of the person. All right. In this motion to revoke unadjudicated probation, does the defendant waive a formal reading of this? And can we proceed in some? Yes, Michelle, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm any statements that you may make during this hearing it shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yeah. Lower your hand. In summary, this motion to revoke unadjudicated probation alleges that on December 4th last year, 2023, you were placed on 10 years deferred or unadjudicated probation for the second degree felony of robbery. Is that true? Yes, sir. Allegation number one states you failed to report to the Jefferson County Probation Office for uh, January 25th, February 12th, March 13th, March 26th, all of 2024 in violation of your requirements under your deferred adjudication order for reporting to the probation or office. Is that true or untrue? Yes, sir. Did she ever report? She reported once. <laughs> what date was that? January 25th. I believe it was January 2nd. Was that the very first time? Okay, so she reported the first time and then that was it. And then she kind of absconded, as it were, disappeared, lost us, no longer on the radar. Number two, you failed to provide verification of performing community service hours as required. I presume you probably didn't perform any. Is that true? Is well, that true? She, that is that true or not untrue? We'll talk about explanations here in a minute. Yes, is it right. true? Okay. And then finally, you failed to pay court assessed fees. I'm going to skip that one. Okay. Are you pleading true to allegations one and two here? voluntarily and because those allegations are true. Sure. Do you understand by a knowing and voluntary plea of true to one or more violations of probation? That is enough to grant the motion to revoke probation. Your probation can be revoked. You can now be found guilty yes, and then uh, sentenced up to the full range of punishment, which is no less than two nor more than 20 years confinement in prison. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? Yes, sir. I find you were pleading true voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true to allegations one and two of this motion to revoke probation. All right, State of Texas. Um, did you want to supplement anything with uh, the probation officer in his case? No, Judge, so I, I, can, I, uh, I don't have any offense reports and I. I oh. So I, well, no, no, I'm talking about just what she's pleaded true to. I'd like to a little more about. Sure. Can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, okay. Raise your right hand. You sign. I swear or affirm the testimony you were about to give us truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. go ahead. Thank. You. Yes. So it is true. <laughs> uh, I, I interrupted you before you could say true. Yes, uh, or yes, you you were. 
accepting the oath, correct? So are you the probation officer for Courtney Shell or are you filling in for someone else? It's currently the probation for. How many times have you seen Michelle? I have seen her. And when was that? Second. 2024. And was she ordered to report to you since that time? Yes, she was ordered for the next report date. And what what type of efforts have we made to contact her and try to get a hold of her? to call her we've looked to see if she was in custody sent letters in the mail so all the usual things to her last known address and phone numbers have you had any luck talking to her so was she supposed to perform community service during all this yes. and has she performed any hours of community service has she paid anything on this piece has she tried to contact her office that you know of to try to reschedule any of the appointments she's missed? And has she also just recently been arrested on an offense of prostitution? And is that how she came into custody into, uh, so that we can have this hearing? We, it's not like she turned herself in or anything, right? So, all of this time that she was supposed to do and she hasn't really done anything on this probation except report that one time is that correct i'll pass witness Jen. no question Okay. Uh, anything else from the state? No, you're a uh, defense. Yes, Michelle. Uh, I talked to you concerning the uh, motion to revoke probation, the fact that you uh, failed to report. Mm -hmm. And you understand that you're supposed to be reporting on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but you told me that uh, you quit reporting because you had to stay with your sick mother. Is that yes, correct? Yes. And did you try to notify the probation mm -hmm. office? Did you call up there to try to talk to someone? Uh, no. Okay, but you never actually physically talked to anybody? Absolutely. In your time. Did you talk to this lady who's your probation yes, officer? Yes. And what did you tell her? I told her my mom was sick and can we reschedule? She rescheduled my mom was in a hospital. We couldn't I couldn't make it because my sister had to work and my niece was out of town working. I'm doing it okay. And when was she placed in jail, please? Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um and she just kept on like I'm sending payments to the phone. I got we got text messages nowhere. She sent um messages telling me to report and I got um, messages where I was calling to be messages on her phone. You, you do understand that you're required to report probation on a regular basis, correct? And even though you had some family issues, you still should have been reporting. Correct. You know, so you recognize that if the court were to allow you What's to stay on probation, that, that you uh, would be required to report on a regular basis in person. Correct. Just if you're ordered to do so. Are you asking the court to give you another chance to let you stay on probation uh, rather than uh, revoke you and send you to prison this time? Yes, sir. Anything else you want to tell the judge? And plus the community service. At that time, she was giving me community service. She said there were no officers to do the community service. You've only spoken to her one time, no, correct? No, I've seen her more than once. How many times? Uh, probably about three. Okay. Is that true? Would you want to ask her some more questions uh, to follow up based upon what the defendant's testimony is? No, sir, but I'd like to ask the defendant a question. Well, I'd like to know. She's saying one time that she talked to you. Well, I've already asked her all that about whether or not she got any phone calls, anything from the defendant. And she said no, she hadn't received anything. I've talked to her. And it's on my mother's phone to where we talked. You've been on probation now for going on seven months. Yes. 
How many times did you report? Three times because my mom was sick and I was the only one there. You, you reported three times. You heard the lady's testimony that you were only reporting one time. Did you hear that? I heard that. So that's wrong? Yes. Okay. All right. Which times, what are the dates that you reported? Because they document like every that, time. I Let, may I finish, okay. please? I. What goes on in here is the, the, the rudest kind of behavior. People interrupt because you want to bully everybody. You want to overwhelm everyone. You want to be the one doing the talking and nobody else. It's your way or the highway. Nobody else matters. That's the impression I get. Be quiet for a minute, and then you get a fair opportunity to speak. That's the way we learned when we were kindergarten. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. She uh, uh, says, according to this, the probation officer, and according to the evidence, you only reported one time, and that was that first time, which was six months ago, I guess, and it, which would have been in December. She reported on January 2nd. January 2nd, the day after. Okay. And here we are, July, uh, getting, uh, uh, we're in the middle to end of July, which would be going on seven months. And according to the probation office, we only reported that one time. And they document every time people show up. But it's your contention under oath that you went to the probation office three times and checked in and three times. Can you, ex is that right? I called. Is that right? Oh, you called. You didn't I show up in person. I called twice. Can I, s let me ask a question, then you can answer. We're going to, I'm going to tell you that one more time. That's real simple. Did you show up in person three times? Yes or no? Is that Speak out so she can help no. no. So you showed up in person one time. Would that be fair? Yes. The other times you say you called. Yes. All right. It's been seven months, seven months, and you only showed up one time, correct? Correct. All right. Do you see anything wrong with that? Because you're supposed to be showing up regularly like everybody else does. Everybody else does weekly or monthly. It depends on what the probation office uh, determines. But everybody else who's on probation has to, 5,000 people have to show up regularly. Why do you think you are different? Go ahead. I don't think I was different. I was just like, my mom took me sick. Yeah. For seven straight months? She had to not really put a warrant out. Like in March or something. That's not the answer. For seven or eight months, yes or no? You couldn't have reported any other time? Or could you? I could. But you just decided you're going to do it your way. Why go and she put it on? So then you're saying your goal then is to evade the warrant and not be brought into custody? You're looking up like this is boring you. Are you bored? Yeah. I'm, just right. All right. I'm looking at the uh, post-sentence report on this. And it shows the circumstances of this case, which are serious. And the lengthy set of misdemeanor convictions that you have. Okay, so you're over at the uh, store on College Street, the Mercado de Familia. You know what that stands for in Mercado. Spanish? Mercado. Oh, grocery store. De Familia. No. The family store. Oh, okay. And you are... Uh, the authorities there, the people who run the store and operate it, confront you on aisle five following something suspicious. They followed you. Uh, well, they said they observed you loading items from a handbasket into your oversized purse. So 
You refuse to talk to them, let's say. They followed you into the parking lot. A physical altercation ensued, resulting in injuries to two people who were uh, people at the store trying to protect their property. One person was struck in the face by you with a closed fist. Another person was struck in the right cheek by you with a closed fist. All trying to re retrieve their stolen goods that you had placed in uh, that purse. So let's see. The store manager comes along, manages to get the purse with the stolen items, and then allowed you to leave. And then they filed charges. And because of the violence involved and the striking of, other, of two or more people, you're charged with a robbery. And Okay, so we placed you on probation and you knew when we put you on probation, you were completely made aware that you were looking up to 20 years in prison if you failed on probation. And here seven months have gone by and you appeared one time. And after that you have uh, elected uh, to disregard the rules and not comply with probation and do it your way. And here we are. What's the state asking for? Judge, I believe she has a revocation where she got three years last time, I think. I, I, I don't know that. I'm looking at this post-sentence report. Three years for what? Um, I, I think don't... there's a felony on the, on the last page. Next page over, right up the top up there. It says probation revoked, adjudicated three years in prison. What court was that in? This one or? 252nd. Can you pull that up, please? A prior conviction? It looks like 2019. Tampering was dismissed. Okay, then the manufacturing. They were together. It has you, but it also has B through three. So it, but I think it, it was us. Okay, so uh, according to this post sentence report, the defendant has a prior conviction. Uh, that is a conviction before she commits this act. And also, it shows 27 Class C misdemeanors, eight of which include disorderly conduct, fighting, and failing to appear. Okay. So because of that revocation and because of the circumstances of not reporting, doing anything, state's asking for five years prison time. She's asking the court to let her continue on probation. Anything you want to say? No? All right. All right. If nothing further, I'm going to find there is sufficient evidence supporting this motion to revoke probation to be granted by a preponderance of the ev evidence or greater, as allegations one and two have been proven true by a preponderance of the evidence or greater. Your deferred or unadjudicated probation is hereby revoked. Earlier in this case, you pleaded guilty to the second degree felony robbery voluntarily. You were mentally competent to do so. You understand, you understood and appreciated the consequences of pleading guilty. There was sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea from state's exhibit one admitted at that hearing to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Now that your probation is revoked, I hereby find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this underlying robbery in this 23 CO 122. I find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and you are hereby sentenced to confinement in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of five years. You will be given credit for all time you have served in accordance with this case. You can't treat people like that, and also you can't absolutely refuse to follow the rules of the law when you are placed on probation. Anything else? That is all. Thank you. Next is 